All right, everybody, here's our follow-up video to the Frozen Rod Saga. So it's really stirred up a lot of interesting comments online, and really there's a lot of people that, that joined in, and I uh, really appreciate you guys taking your time to work out those formulas and share those formulas with uh, just regular folks like us on the thermal coefficients and how much it should expand per degree and stuff like that. Really, really interesting stuff. But we just wanted to show you these uh, rods real quick. So we measured all these after we had them... Um, temp stabilized here in the in the house at 70 degrees so and all of the pins pin ends came up at uh, 0 0.9901 to 0 0.9902 so that was our range one tenth across all eight rods and so that's kind of what Molnar advertises is that they're plus or minus 0 0.0001 on all specs so uh, honestly this 0 0.002 you would say oh that's two tenths out uh, but really, I don't believe it is. Uh, it's probably just an error with our mic and bore gauge setup. But uh, we really just look for the split, and then we measure our pins with the same mic that we set the bore gauge up, and we look for that clearance. So that might be, not be a precise measurement, but it's an accurate measurement. I know it sounds kind of funny, but um, then down here on the big ends, we see the exact same repeatability, which is pretty impressive. Um, in, in this kind of a dollar range of rod, this is the tightest tolerances I've ever seen, and we've seen a lot of these. Uh, coming from various manufacturers so we would definitely buy these again um so we do have our bore gauge out here it's a fowler it's not some uh, high zoot high dollar thing it's pretty basic uh we checked it on one of these rods again just to make sure and it's dead on reading that uh, 2.3250 so the process now we're going to pull the rod out of the freezer where it's uh i'll just kind of show you here so we got a just a cutting board in there and an oven mitt so we can handle the rod and then the rod is in a Ziploc bag here and it's been sitting there for about 26 hours now with the peas and carrots. So we'll get set up and get these other rods put away and we'll pull that one out and measure the big end. Then we're going to put it back in and get set up to measure the small end and pull it back out and do the small end. Right. Got the on. Got the cutting board. Not touching the rod. Ziploc baggie here. See if I can hold it vertical so you guys can read the dial indicator better. Go in there in the same bore. And look at that. We are eight tenths smaller. So 0 0.0008 smaller on the big end. So for you guys that did the math, I think you all were in that area. That's pretty close. I would say seven and a half to eight. So we're gonna put it back in the freezer and then we'll just set up and do the small end. Here we go again with the small and same process. We got our chilled cutting board. I'm not going to touch the rod with my bare hand. The oven mitt was in the freezer as well as the, tub, the cutting board. Get this out of here. And we're going to measure it vertically so y'all can see it again. So. Zoom in on that indicator there. So this rod was two ten. It was you know when we measured it first time it was two right about there. So we have seen that's about six. I would say now. So about four tenths shrinkage, four tenths of a thousand shrinkage there. So a lot of guys were asking why we were doing this. And uh, we're kind of getting confused that, that we were doing maybe a quality of product review for the Molnar rod, and that's not what we were doing. Really what we were doing was validating our methods that we use to temperature stabilize parts and how far off they could be um, if we measured them out in our shop, which isn't heated 24 hours a day. So uh, our normal process is to bring these parts into our house um, and let them temperature stabilize. And while they're in the house, of course, I take kind of a ribbing from my wife because um, there's car parts all over the house, of course, getting temp stabilized. So I just wanted to do this to see if it was worth it. You know, if we if we'd have brought these in and, and saw that they were maybe changing, you know, 0 0.0001, then that wouldn't be worth it to me. Um, but we had a significant change on the big end. Uh, that would have ate up, you know, quite a bit of our clearances if we weren't um, 
measuring that properly and measuring it how it was measured when it was machined. So that's the big thing is we want the part to be in the state it was when it's machined and all the parts to be at the same temperature. So that's why we bring them into the house because if we were to measure rods on a cold day and then a crank on a warm day, we could get a discrepancy there in our clearance and think we had more clearance than we do or have more clearance and, or less clearance than what we planned for. So thanks guys for following along. The next uh, ones I think we're going to do is people are asking about pistons. So we have an old TRW forged piston here that's just worn slap out and a cast old piston. I don't know what it is. Probably silver light or something like that. Maybe even a fancy badger. Um, but we're going to bake these up to about 400 degrees. See how big they are. Measure them at measure them there, measure them at room temperature, and then freeze them. So follow along on our team page, Top Secret Speed, and uh, you'll see those videos. And we're also going to do a really controversial video on Vacuum Advance and should you hook it to ported or manifold. So make sure you get in on that discussion.